entire church family and art lovers and really bored people, it is John from Watson Baptist Church. And you know what time it is. It is time for fun with crafts and paper. Lots and lots of paper. Today, I want to do something really messy called papier-mâché. Some people call it papier-mâché. The word is French, and it means literally chewed paper because apparently some French people actually did chew their paper to make art. And there's a lot of fiber in paper, but we're probably not gonna chew it, and if I do chew it, it won't be on video. Another fun fact about paper mache is even though it has a French name, it actually dates all the way back to ancient China, as far back as 200 BC. The Chinese used paper mache and thick lacquer to make soldiers' helmets. I don't think if I was a soldier, I would want a helmet made of paper, but that's what they did. But paper mache has been around for a really long time and it has spread out over the ages, across the world, and it finally made its way to my third grade art class where I learned about it. And today we're gonna try and make a fish. Only not just any fish, but a Siamese fighting fish. So check this out. projects take a while, like several hours or so, and so far I've been able to do them all in one day. Paper mache, you really are supposed to let it dry, and each coat you do, maybe three layers, like overnight for two or three days. But if you've gotten to know me by now, I have the patience of a seven-year-old, and I want it done now. So this paste and glue, I'm going to try and speed things up without hopefully burning anything down. Okay, I know it looks more like a gourd than a fish, and it is going to be kind of a tubby fish. Speed things up just a little bit and use the oven. 200 degrees, about 20 minutes. That should do it. All right, so even with the paste I'm using, which is like half glue, half water, and even putting it in the oven, this is just taking too long and I'm gonna have to cheat a lot and I'm gonna use tape, lots and lots of tape, which is still paper, so technically, this is still paper mache, but I just can't wait for this stuff to dry. So let's do it this way. basic coat of paint on the fish and I've got some color shifting acrylic metalish different color paint I'm gonna try and use this I hope I have enough of it just to give it a nice shimmer to it like a fish scales <music> Gonna use some Mod Podge here. This is the last step. I'm gonna use at least maybe two coats of this. And the reason I'm doing this is because I, I hardly used any 
actual paper mache and glue to hold it together. I used a lot of tape and I cheated because I'm impatient. And once those balloons pop, the thing could just collapse in on itself. And I'd like it to last more than a couple of days. So this right here should strengthen it, uh, give it a nice like strong shell on the outside. Plus it's got this luster to it. So it's gonna make it look nice and shiny, which should look pretty good. So it took a little while, longer than I wanted, and it was really, really messy, and paper mache doesn't taste good, but, but up, but up, but up, but up, but up. Look at that. My very own paper mache Siamese fighting fish, and he's really big. I think I went overboard a little bit, and it's not perfect. He's supposed to have a giant uh, fin on his belly, but I would have nowhere to put him down and work on him, so I cheated. But look at the scales. Look how that, that iridescent metallic color shifting paint came out uh, with the gold hues on the red. And then the, the Mod Podge sealant just made it really, really shiny with a great luster. So it came out great, I think. I'm gonna try and just leave them right here. Now, the other reason I chose to make a Siamese fighting fish is because these fish can be very aggressive and territorial. If you put a mirror up to one of these fish and they see themselves in the reflection, they will flare their gills forward like this bad boy and puff themselves out and try to look more dangerous and bigger than they are. And they will try to threaten their own reflection and they see themselves as the enemy. And that kind of reminded me of a quote from the great preacher Charles Spurgeon. He said, beware of no man more than yourself. We carry our own worst enemies within us. You ever feel that way? You look at yourself in the mirror and you're thinking, what is wrong with me? And while I know that we face external pressures, the Bible tells us from the world and the devil, truly the greatest pressure that believers face comes from within. In fact, if you read Romans chapter 7, you see Paul describing that in his very own Christian life, the, his own inner struggle. He said in Romans 7, 19, I, I want to do what is good, but I don't. And I don't want to do what is wrong, but I... I do it anyway. This is the titanic struggle that all believers wrestle with. The battle between the spirit and the flesh. And I don't know about you, but I'm always having to work on the guy in the mirror. And while I may be my own worst enemy, the good news is I know that Jesus is also my very best friend. Just as Paul called out in that same chapter in Romans 7, 24 and 25, he said, What a miserable man I am, and who will free me from this body dominated by sin and death? And he said, thanks be to God, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that means I don't have to take on an attitude of defeat about myself because I know that Jesus gives me victory. I know that he's more than enough. And he's giving me grace and more and more victories over sin in my life. And so as I look at myself in the mirror, more and more, I don't see the old me. I see Christ in me. And that's a good look. Hey, thank you so much for watching.